This is going to be the ultimate deck building guide in Marvel Snap. I'm not going to tell you what decks to play, I'm not even going to tell you what cards to play, but I'm going to teach you how you can, with confidence, build your own deck and play with the new cards as you unlock them. Marvel Snap is not like other card games. You're not opening packs, you're not crafting the cards that you want in the order that you want them. You're unlocking cards in Marvel Snap in the order that the game tells you that you're unlocking your cards, and you've just got to sort of be okay with that. This is one of the main philosophies from Second Dinner. They want everyone's collections to feel different. That's also why there are so many variants in the game. It is unlikely that anyone else is going to have a collection quite like yours. Of course, the downside to that is that it's very difficult to net deck. As you're building a collection, as you're gathering cards together, you can't exactly go, hmm, what is the best pool two deck? when you've only got half of the cards, it's not going to work. Yeah, you can look up what the best performing decks are and see if you happen to have the cards that fit that. But a better way to play, at least in my opinion, is look at your collection and build something that suits you. Now, I know that building a deck in a card game is very scary for a lot of people. It's difficult. There's a lot to think about uh, and there's a lot to worry about. Like, what if I what if I put the wrong card in the deck? Well, the good news is in Marvel Snap, it's very simple. There's only 12 cards, so there's not that much that can go wrong. Also, quality of your deck in Marvel Snap is greatly mitigated by the snap mechanic in itself. In fact, surprise is a good thing. Having a different deck to your opponents is a good thing because it means that your opponent isn't going to know card for card what you're playing and it means you can mind game them a little bit easier and really take advantage of that snap mechanic. I am an infinite player in Marvel Snap. I've hit infinite four times. Every single season that I've played, I've hit infinite and I've never net decked in this game. Yeah, sure, don't get me wrong. I've looked up what are the best performing decks and that kind of thing, but I've never just gone onto a website and been like, yeah, sure, copy that deck, play it to infinite. I've gone to infinite every time with my own brew of decks and I promise you, you can do the same thing. It doesn't really matter how big your collection is. It doesn't really matter how much experience you have with card games, with a little bit of mastery of the snap mechanic and a little bit of your own spice, I promise you, you can get infinite. Now, I do highly encourage you to do a little bit of further reading before just relying on this video. There is so much content on Marvel Snap out there from the great creators uh, that tell you how good certain cards are. Cozy Snap has done an incredible few videos, uh, in particular recently, uh, on the tier list of the best cards available in Pool 1 and the best cards available in Pool 2. I highly recommend giving those videos a watch. You can use the knowledge that you get from that to pick out which are the best cards that you've got and then use those cards to form the core fundamentals of the deck you're about to make. As you go through the game and unlock cards in the order that the game determines for you, you're going to want to play with the new cards when possible because you want to do that first upgrade from common to uncommon. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check this video for leveling up quickly in Marvel Snap. As a result, it's good to play with, well, everything. It's also exciting that way. Every time I got a new card, the first thing I wanted to do was jam it into a deck because then you get to play with your new toys and new toys are fun. So let's say that I'm climbing through Pool 2 and I unlock Vulture. And let's say that I want to play a deck with Vulture. What am I going to do? I'm going to start to build a move deck. So without any help, how would I do that? Firstly, you play the game a bunch. I would imagine that, you know, if you're climbing in Pool 2, you've got some idea of what cards you see going in in certain decks. So let's open up the collection manager and let's go new deck and I'm going to type move. What is the first thing I would do when building a new deck? If you're building a deck with a certain archetype like move, let's just look at your move cards. And I click the filter thing here and click move and there you go. The filter system certainly isn't perfect. For example, zero contains the word remove, which is not what we're looking for. But I'm going to now construct a move deck using only the cards that I would have up until pool two. I'm not gonna be using the pool three cards, don't worry. So Heimdall is a very obvious way to start. This is your, this is gonna be your big finisher. Most of the archetypes do have one or two obvious big finishers. In move decks, it's Heimdall. So the first thing you do is jam him in the deck. Then you wanna look at the other cards that are core to the archetype that you're making. In terms of move, that's going to be Doctor Strange. It's going to be Mars Morales if you've got the season pass. It's gonna be Vulture. It's gonna be Multiple Man. Where is he? There he is. I used the variant. 
It's cooler. And if you're lucky enough to have the cards in pool two, that's going to be Cloak and Vulture. I'm going to be specifically ignoring the pool three move cards right now, which are Human Torch and Dagger. That's fine. I will build a deck with those a little bit later when we get to a more advanced section. But for now, we're building a pool two deck. Now, I've put all of the really obvious cards in and we've already made half the deck. So that's half the battle over. But this is where it gets a little bit more difficult. What I like to do is start by sort of jamming in all of the cards that I think I might want to play in this deck and then take out cards if I find that they're not fitting when, when the job is finished. Here's what I mean. Iron Fist, Craven. These are some other move cards that typically are found in pool one move decks. But then we're sort of... That's, that's sort of it when it comes to... And I suppose Nightcrawler has the ability to move. I also got Vision before... Um, Vulture, so we'll put Vision in as well. That leaves two spaces, but to be totally honest, I'm not happy with all of the cards in my move deck. So now let's take a step back and look at the full collection. To make life easier, I'm going to untick all variants so that I only see one copy of each card. And now here we are. We've got our big finisher, so I'm not really looking at adding any six drops to the deck. But I feel like one of the cards that needs a little bit of help is Multiple Man. Multiple Man is great because you get multiple copies of it, but the problem is three power, getting multiple copies of that doesn't seem that game winning to me. So what's the solution there? The solution is find a card or two that's going to buff multiple man. So let's find Forge, pull one card on reveal, give the next card you play plus two power. Ideally play that before multiple man. That's, that's a strategy. Hulkbuster, another pull one card. Seems pretty good. If you can attach that to multiple man and then move it, you're going to get multiple copies of that. But now the deck is full. So when you look at what a move deck does, it tends to fill up the space quite quickly with multiple man, mul multiple men, or all of the men. So um, other cheap cards, maybe not looking so hot. I'm going to remove Nightcrawler. It doesn't look super necessary here. Again, the purpose of move decks isn't to move cards around sort of randomly. It's, it's to put cards into the deck that get buffed when you move them and move those cards. So maybe we don't need vision here either. Mars is pretty good in the deck just because it's going to get cheaper when you move another card. So that's five power, pretty cheap. But we're back with two spaces. So let's see, we've got one one drop, four two drops, three three drops, a four drop and a six drop. So I think ideally we need maybe another one drop card and uh, maybe another five or six drop card. Actually, Vision and Nightcrawler may maybe were the missing pieces to this puzzle, ironically. But at this final stage in, in this sort of deck building, I, I like to just go through and, and peruse the deck and, and see if there's anything that just jumps out to me. And this is where looking at the, at the card tier lists comes in really handy because you'll have some idea of if there's anything you should just outright avoid. And you can use your own knowledge to see if there's any card you particularly enjoy that you'd like to put in. Again, you don't have to build a deck exact. Relying on the snap mechanic to build ranks is, is much more consistent. And if you can build, put, put a surprise card into this deck, then that could really catch people off guard and help you climb ranks. Killmonger could be a good shout, for example. Um, that's as we only have the one one drop in the deck and we're, and we're going to be clogging up our board with lots of multiple man and that kind of thing. You know, playing Killmonger, destroying Iron Fist and destroying my opponent's one drops. That could be a pretty good shout. Is Killmonger necessary in a move deck? Absolutely not. Could it work? Sure, why not? So you see, there is so much freedom when it comes to building decks in Marvel Snap. And when you stop looking at it as a, oh, I have to get this perfect kind of thing, and more a, wow, this is fun. I can play the cards that I enjoy playing and and, and watch them come together in, in, in different ways. It becomes a really cool experience. I'm going to put Hobgoblin in the deck as my five drop because... Uh, why not? Again, the, the, one of the issues with the move decks tend to have is they clog up your side of the board too much. Hobgoblin is going to go to the opponent. It's not going to get in the way. Uh, that could be pretty fun. So here you look at this deck straight away and its general strategy is, yep, Forge to buff multiple man, Hulkbuster to buff multiple man, Doctor Strange, Heimdall to move multiple man around, Cloak to move multiple man around. Um, if you can move Vulture around, that's even better. You get one huge card. I mean, Vulture can single-handedly win lanes on his own. If you can move him once with Cloak or once with Iron Fist and then a second time with Heimdall, then uh, Vulture just uh, dominates. It seems like a good deck. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to play any decks now. I just want to show you the deck building process and how that works. And then I'm going to stream myself playing the decks that I've built today in this video uh, a little bit later. So keep an eye. I'm going to be streaming on YouTube so uh, keep an eye out for that. But there we go. We'll call this pull to move and move on to the next deck. I believe the next card I unlocked after Vulture was Agent 13. So let's build an Agent 13 deck. Why not? Now, <laughs> Agent 13 isn't really the card that you can build a whole deck around, but you can definitely use Agent 13 as a, hmm, I wonder what else would fit in the deck with this card. 
uh, and you can build something cool from that without a doubt. So what does Agent 13 do? Agent 13 adds a card to your hand. So I guess really what we're building is a collector deck. So here's the collector. If we're playing a collector deck, then I guess we're collecting some cards. So we'll go Cable. We'll put in Mantis. Moon Girl. Devil Dino seems like a pretty good endgame card for this deck. I almost forgot to put Agent 13 in, the, the, the reason that I'm making the deck. Actually, hang on a second. I'm pretty sure I've got a variant for her. Oh, we've got two variants for her. Oh, they're both really nice. I'll go with the Pixel one. Big fan of the Pixel variants. So again, we're in a very similar position to the one we were in with the move deck. We've sort of half filled the deck with the, I'd say the obvious cards. Oh, Sentinel. Sentinel's an obvious card. It's actually going to be easier for you to, to do this part of the process than it is for me because I've completed the collection. I've got all of the pull three cards as well. I'm having to sort of, my eyes are just trying to glaze over those because I'm trying to keep this as a uh, pull two agent 13 deck. So I'm just trying to ignore the pull three cards. So what are we looking at here? We've got two one drops. We've got three two drops, one four, one five. I, I feel like because we're playing Moon Girl and because we're, we're, we're gathering more resources, we're collecting more cards from the opponent, we probably want to go more cheap cards. So Sunspot's looking good. Um, I really like Rocket Raccoon. I, I, I know that, that it, it, it's not super popular. A lot of people prefer Nightcrawler as the sort of one drop, but like my sort of general one drop of choice is Rocket or Iceman, Rocket or Iceman. Um, actually, we'll go Iceman instead. We'll play with more pull two cards. That's fine. But again, this is the kind of thing like, and again, the, the real point I'm trying to stress here is that there's a lot of room for creativity and for, for playing the cards that you want to play in Marvel Snap. You really like Yondu? Stick Yondu in the deck. Why not? Ebony Moor? Bad card, but if, if you want to play him, like, you know, you do you. I'm pretty sure you could get to Infinite with pretty much any deck in Marvel Snap as long as you sort of learn how to play it correctly and, you know, learn how to snap correctly. And when I say any deck, I mean, obviously, not just a bunch of, not just 12 random cards that don't work together at all, but like, as long as there's some level of synergy there, you can make something work. You know what, we're playing a lot of cheap cards, so Angela seems like a bit of a no-brainer. And actually thinking about it, we're on reveal, on reveal, on reveal, on reveal, on reveal, on reveal, on Hmm. Uh, uh, lots of on reveal cards, but, but none that really benefit Odin. I guess we could put Ironheart and, and Odin in. Why not? Let's jam that together. In Odin. In my opinion, Ironheart is outright one of the best cards in the game in terms of versatility and, and, and sort of how early you get it and how good it is. Like, absolutely love this card. Why not? Pull to Agent 13 deck. Is it going to be any good? I'd have to sort of play it to find out. And if it's not, maybe I'll tweak it a little. But uh, at the end of the day, I, I I have no problem playing this in pull three. And again, I'll, I'll play it on stream. Let's look at something a little bit more advanced. Um, this is probably going to be uh, featuring some cards that you don't have yet because I'm now going to dip into pull three. But um, just to just show you how I, the late sort of end game deck building process works, at least for me, let's build a Patriot deck. So Patriot's whole thing is that your cards that don't have any abilities gain two power, which is going to mean that you're going to get to play a lot of those old, old cards that you've had for a long time that, that you've sort of written off as being garbage because until now they have been garbage. But with Patriot, they're pretty good. So if I go into filter and if I type click no ability, um, we're going to play we're going to play Wasp which is just zero energy, one power card with no effect. We'll play Squirrel Girl. We'll play Shocker, Cyclops, The Thing, Abomination. These cards are all fantastic in the no ability deck. Uh, and to round things out, I'm going to add Debris and Ultron, which are both pull three cards. Three spaces. Um, where's Mystique? Mystique is pretty important. Kazar seems pretty good. I feel like I'm missing something obvious that I'd usually put in this deck. Oh, Onslaught. Onslaught, of course. Okay, so we'll call this No Ability. And you see how this is coming together? I've just built three decks. I'm reasonably confident you could hit infinite with any of those three decks. If you learn how to play correctly, learn how to snap correctly, and most importantly, know to retreat if you're not getting the tools that you need to win. We'll build one more just for good measure. And I'm going to call this a control deck. We'll call this like a, like a tech control deck. No specific archetype here in terms of on reveal, no ability, discard, etc, etc. But we're just going to build a deck that, that intends to, to beat the sort of rushy, I'm playing lots of one-drop decks, the Khazar decks and that kind of thing. So obviously, if we're trying to control the one-drop decks, we want Killmonger. Killmonger. 
but let's also play some other tech cards just to make life a little bit trickier for the opponent. We're going to try and, and prevent them from doing the cool things. This is sort of an anti-fun deck. You don't want your opponent to have fun. So let's put in Cosmo. Let's put in Enchantress. Put in Sandman. Sandman means that players can only play one card per turn. If we're playing Sandman, we want to play some big cards. How about Leader? Uh, to, to copy whatever your opponent plays in the last turn and play it for yourself as well. And in fact, we'll have a second six drop just to guarantee that we have a six drop to play. Doctor Doom is a very good six drop with um, with Sandman because you, you play essentially a five power card on each lane. Um, Sunspot is a really good control card. Obviously, you want to play it after Killmonger if you're going to play Killmonger, but it, it, it works pretty well. You just sit there on its own building power. We can play Rogue as another anti-fun anti, anti -fun card, which is um, take your opponent's ongoing effects away from them and uh, use it instead. I kind of like the idea of Crossbones in this deck. You can only play this in a lo location while you're winning, but like... Um, anything that's that's sort of got a lot of power is good here because we're potentially wasting a turn playing Sandman. In fact, on that note, um, Red Skull and Maximus are probably quite good in this deck too because there are other decks that have got sort of a lot of power. Where is Maximus? There it is. The both cards that have got a lot of power, they've got downside. Maximus' downside causes your opponent to draw two cards, but if they're only allowed to play one card a turn anyway due to Sandman, that kind of works out. Red Skull, again, if your opponent's only playing one card a turn, isn't gonna his downside isn't going to be too, too bad. And let's play Ronin. Uh, another card that benefits from your opponent not being able to play many cards. Wait, oh, maybe I should play Shang-Chi in this deck. Do you know what? We've got Rogue. Let's take out Enchantress and put Shang-Chi in. Now, I'm not going to lie. This deck is a bit of a weird mess. I'm calling it Control. Uh, is it really a control deck? Maybe I should be running magic in here. I don't know. Is it going to work? Who knows? I'm going to play it on stream. We'll find out together. But the point that I'm trying to make in this video is that making a deck in Marvel Snap really isn't that difficult. Long-term card game enthusiasts that have come from games like Hearthstone or Magic or Yu-Gi-Oh! will tell you, oh no, if you don't have the perfect set of cards, the deck just isn't going to be as good. And I strongly disagree with that in terms of Marvel Snap. The whole point of Marvel Snap is everything is different, everything's unique, and it comes down to playing your cards right and snapping correctly. Know when you've lost and retreat, losing only one cube, trick your opponent into thinking they've won and beat them, win eight cubes. Getting to infinite in Marvel Snap really isn't that difficult as long as you really focus on the snap mechanic and, and go out of your way to retreat if you think you're going to lose. And the best decks in Marvel Snap are the ones that you've enjoyed making and the ones that are entirely yours. Thank you for watching. I will be releasing more deck guides, more deck videos, and more unique stuff like this if you enjoyed. So please hit me with a like if you've liked it. Leave me a comment and let you, me know if this was helpful in any way at all. But thanks for watching. Until next time.